My name is Steve Hayes, I'm with Allsafe Industries, and today I'm going to talk to you about the RKI Instruments GX3R and GX3R Pro. These are the smallest, lightest, 4 and 5 gas instruments available today. I'm also going to cover the SDM3R Calibration Station that allows you to quickly perform bump checks and calibrations. We'll cover the pump module that you can snap onto the GX3R in order to draw samples from confined spaces, and of course our invention, in-case calibration. It's the system for your gas detection instruments. It keeps everything stored together, it keeps your meters charged up, and provides power to the cal station. So let's get started. This is our in-case calibration kit for the GX3R and the GX3R Pro from RKI Instruments. Our kit is designed to hold up to four instruments in the foam set, two pump modules, and of course the SDM3R calibration station. On the lower level of the kit is where we store the calibration gases. We can hold up to three cylinders of calibration gas and the SDM3R cradle can accept up to three cylinders of calibration gas. The front of the kit has a pass-through charging lead, we call that in-case charging, and when the Pelican case is plugged in, you're providing power to all the instruments and the calibration station. The pump modules run on a single AA battery, which I'll show you in just a minute. As you can see, the 3R and the 3R Pro are the smallest four gas, five gas instruments on the market. You can tell the difference by the number of sensors installed in the instrument and the label on the front of the meter. So as you can see, this one is labeled GX3R and this one is labeled GX3R Pro. And then by looking at the bottom of the instrument, you can see that the 3R runs on three sensors, an O2 sensor, an LEL sensor, and then a combination CO H2S sensor. And the Pro runs on four sensors, the same O2, LEL, and COH2S combo sensor, plus one additional position for a fifth gas. These are the smallest, lightest, four gas, five gas meters on the market. So small that you'll be able to wear these in the breathing zone so that you can constantly monitor the air that you're about to breathe or work in. Remember, we're not gas detecting unless that air is getting to the sensors in the instrument. So the meter on its own is a diffusion instrument. It's only detecting the air samples that are presented to these sensors right here in the bottom of the unit. So make sure when you're wearing these that these sensors don't get covered up by your vest or by the strap of your fall protection or your radio strap. You want to make sure that uh, these sensors are always exposed to the air that you're trying to measure. When you do need to pull a sample to these instruments, that's where we can utilize the sample pump for each one. So this is the pump for the GX3R Pro. As you can see, it has a wider body to it and is feeding the gas sample to four different sensor positions. And then this is the pump module for the GX3R. And as you can see, it is a slightly smaller unit and is feeding the air sample to three sensor positions. And now I can turn the meter on. All I need to do is push and hold the mode button until I hear the meter beep. And then I can let go. It's gonna run through a quick warm up sequence. I just calibrated so my next calibration is not due for 90 days. There's my time and my date. There's my battery power and it's reminding me my alarm points, uh, my alarms are set to latching. There's my sensors that are installed. There's the full scale reading for all four channels. There's my warning alarm set points. There's my alarm set points. There's my high alarm set points. There's my short term exposure limit set points. There's my time weighted average set points. And then the meter is now ready to use. It's a very quick warm up sequence. So you can see that I have all four readings displayed. It's giving me the name of the sensor. It's giving me the uh, range that that sensor reads in. So my LEL sensor is a percent of LEL. My oxygen sensor is a percent of oxygen. And my CO and my H2S are reading in part per million. Of course, I've got my battery icon down here. I think we're all familiar with the battery icon from our cell phones. 
To advance to the next page, I hit the power mode button. The first page is my peak readings. That's the highest reading for each channel since I've had the meter turned on. If I hit the mode button again, I go to my short-term exposure limit readings. If I hit the mode button again, I go to my time-weighted average readings. If I hit the mode button again, I bring up the hydrocarbon gas list. I calibrate to methane. If my target gas is anything other than methane, I want to come into this list and select that gas. It doesn't make the instrument specific to the new gas, it just makes the reading a little more accurate. Hit the button again, this would display my calibration uh, data. If I hit the mode button again, I get my time and date and temperature. If I hit the mode button again, I would display my alarm set points. And notice it's flashing to tell me that if I want to say yes, I push the air button. And if I want to say no, I hit the mode button. And then if I hit the mode button one more time, I'm back to the main display where I'm getting my gas readings. And then when I'm finished with the instrument at the end of the day, I simply push and hold the power button until the instrument is off. Now I want to run through what it looks like to power up the GX3R Pro. Remember this is the five gas version of the GX3R. And so same uh, two button uh, operation for the GX3R Pro. So if you can operate a GX3R, you can operate a GX3R Pro. But let's go ahead and power it on and see what differences we get. So push and hold power button. It's gonna turn it on. And immediately you can see that the instrument is saying confirm to use. So user mode, if I want to enter user mode, I'll press the mode button in order to run a calibration. And if I don't want to run a calibration, I would hit the air button because it's telling me that my next date of calibration has expired. So for this video, I'm going to go ahead and hit the air button to say no and then I'll come back to the calibration of this unit. So once again, time and date, it's telling me what my battery power is and then I'm set to latched alarms. There's the sensors that are installed. There's the full scale reading. There's the warning alarm set points. There's the alarm set points. There's the high alarm set points. So you actually have three alarm levels on the GX3R. There's my short-term exposure limit set points, my time-weighted average set points, and then the meter is ready to use. So we do have a few more characters here at the top. You've got the time, uh, you've got the time like on the GX3R, but now I have a speaker icon to let me know that my audible alarms are on. I've got my Bluetooth icon that's letting me know that it's ready to pair with the device if you wanted to use the RKI app and then my battery icon at the top of the screen. If I want to toggle through the information that the GX3R Pro will provide for me, obviously I'm getting all five sensor readings on the screen now with labels and measurement values reading in either percent or in part per million. If I press the mode button, I go to the peak reading screen this is the highest number that I've read since the meter's been turned on. If I hit the power mode button again, this is my short-term exposure limits. It has not had enough time to calculate that yet, so I'm seeing a dash is right there. If I hit the button again, these are my time-weighted averages. If I hit the button again, this is my hydrocarbon gas list. So I mentioned before, if I'm not measuring methane, I could use this hydrocarbon gas list to dial in the flammable or combustible gas that I'll be uh, looking for. Uh, so I get a more accurate reading. It turns on a correction factor. As you noticed, if I talk too long, it will kick back to page one. So let me catch back up to where we were. There's my hydrocarbon gas list. If I'm reading methane, I'll just leave that alone. If I need to change to something else like hydrogen, I could press the air button and select hydrogen from the list. This is my uh, calibration data. So if I want to see the cal data for each sensor, I would hit air for yes and no for mode. 
This is my time and my date and my temperature. These are my alarm set points. If I want to review those alarm set points again that I saw during the warm-up sequence, I would hit air for yes or mode for no. I'm gonna say no. This is my invert selection. So basically this allows the screen to flip upside down uh, when the meter changes orientation. Right now it's set to off. This is my LCD background light. And so this is set to off as well. If I turn this on, the backlight will automatically come on when I walk into a dark area. This is my Bluetooth. If I want Bluetooth turned on, then I would select that here. If I hit the mode button again, I can change the buzzer volume on this uh, unit. And then back to the regular main display where I'm getting my gas readings. So one of the biggest differences with the GX3R Pro, besides being a four sensor, five gas instrument, is its Bluetooth capability. You see the Bluetooth logo flashing right there. That means it's looking to connect to something. Now, if I don't connect within several minutes after turning the instrument on, eventually the Bluetooth power will be turned off to conserve battery runtime. But while this Bluetooth logo is flashing, I can then go to my phone and call up the app so I have a whole folder full of safety apps and this is the RKI link and you saw how quickly it came up. It automatically detected this instrument because I've connected to it before. So it says connection complete. I'm going to say OK. It's going to bring up my sensor readings. It's also bringing me up a reminder right away that says, hey, you're due for bump check. So I like that. That's good. And so I'm getting my real-time readings here. With the instrument being so small, I can literally wear this on my body someplace, making sure that the sensors are exposed to the air I'm about to work or breathe in. And then I can just focus on my phone. So this is the RKI Link app. There's quite a few things I can do here. I won't go into great detail because I think we're all familiar with how phone apps work but obviously I've got my real-time readings on all my sensors, I've got my battery indicator, I've got my menu button up here, so you can see I can enter gas detector settings, detector information, application settings, inversion information. Uh, by example, I'll show you if I go to detector information, it's giving my model, my serial number, and then look at this, calibration and bump history. So when I click this button, it automatically populates my calibration history for all the sensors that I have installed, my bump history for all the sensors that I have installed. And so as you can see, it's telling me I'm due for bump check on all five sensors. If I click the button again, I can go back to the concentration display or I can choose one of the other menus that's available to me. This is the RKI Link app. It only connects to the GX3R Pro. The base GX3R does not have this connectivity option. To make the GX3R a pumped instrument, we'll simply snap this pump module onto the bottom of the meter. If you look on the side here, you've got a little indentation here where the pump module is going to grab and hold on and connect as you then snap the other side of the pump module onto the other side of the instrument. Uh, don't confuse this lower section here. This holds on this plate that holds the sensors in place in addition to these two screws. The GX3R and the GX3R Pro are diffusion instruments but it can also run in pump mode. We run in pump mode by connecting an external sampling pump. I call it a snap-on pump. And so we'll basically take this pump and attach it to the GX3R that now will allow me to pull samples from a confined space or to do area monitoring. Um, I can add up to 50 foot of tubing on this fitting right here of the inlet on the pump module and it operates on one AA battery that will run this pump for 10 hours. 
to connect the pump module. I like to start on the right side, so I'll clip it on the right side first and then rock it to the left side. You want to make sure that both lugs positively lock onto the instrument, and now it's one contained unit. This is my GX3R with the pump installed. To turn on the pump, I'll push and hold the power button. It's going to beep, and then you'll hear the flow start. You also see the two lights are illuminated. I always like to test my pump to make sure my pump stall is working. So I'm simply going to put my finger over the inlet. You can hear the audible alarm and you can see the flashing. So you'll clear whatever obstruction blocked your pump. And then once you know that that's clear, you can push the pump button for one second and then the pump restarts. Very simple pump flow alarm on the RP3R. You can also change the pump speed. So by pushing the power button for one second, you can hear that that has dropped down to a lower uh, flow rate. And now my flow button is flashing slow to show me that I'm in the lower pump speed. If I push the power button for one more second, it bumps back up to high flow rate and I get a, bur a steady burn on the light for the flow rate. And then when I'm ready to turn the pump module off, I push and hold the power button until I hear the pump beep at me and now the pump is off. So pull on the release lever and now I can go back to using my GX3R in diffusion mode. This is the SDM3R calibration station. It's capable of calibrating both the GX3R and the GX3R Pro. If I open the red door, you'll see this yellow tab. On the top of this yellow tab, it says 3R. That means that in this setting, I'm able to calibrate the three sensors that are in the GX3R because I'm blocking one of the gas ports. If I want to calibrate a GX3R Pro, I will push that yellow tab down. Now I see the word Pro, and this gives me the ability to calibrate all four sensors in a GX3R Pro. On the front of the SDM3R calibration station, you have five buttons. You have the power button, and right underneath the power button, it says one second to turn it on, three seconds to turn it off. Over here, you have your bump button. You'll use that button to initiate a bump test. This is your cow button. You'll use that button to initiate a full calibration. You have an edit and an enter button. You can actually do some programming with the SDM3R Cal Station, and you would follow the instructions in the manual on how to use this button to change some of the settings on the station and on the meter. And then finally, you have a copy button. The copy button allows you to uh, download data out of the instrument. And so while the instrument is in the cradle, with the, S, with the calibration station turned on, you'll insert a thumb drive into the port on the front of this unit. And then to download bump and calibration records, you'll push and hold the copy button until this LED turns red and then release. If you also want to download data log files from the meter, you keep pressing the copy button until this LED turns orange. And then it will download both the bump and the calibration reports as well as your data logging files. When the LED light here flashes green, your data transfer is complete. Then you can move this uh, thumb drive to your computer and read those files with the free software that you can download from the RKI website. So I want to show you what the beginning of each day is going to look like when you're going to use your gas detection. So I'm going to pick up one of my GX3Rs, I'm going to disconnect it from its charging lead. I want to make sure that I've turned on my calibration station so I see no lights right now so it's off. All I have to do to turn it on is push and hold that power button for one second. You'll see the lights starting to flash, it's waiting to do something. So now I'm going to take my instrument. I'm going to open the red door. I'm going to put in the instrument bottom first, snap it into place. So then when I close the door, it's going to turn the instrument on and then I'll have my choice of what I want to do today with my meter. So close the door. You can see it boots up in SDM mode. Now this Cal station has been set to automatically download the data 
And so right now it's downloading any data files that are in the instrument. Once that's complete, you can see that it's showing me some numbers and it's showing me the word transmit. It is ready now for me to perform a test. And the numbers that we're seeing are the calibration gas values. So it's reminding me of the calibration gas it wants to use. These are factory default settings. And then I have my choice of either doing a bump or a cal. So I should always start my gas detection with a bump check before each day's use. So I'm gonna push and hold the bump button for one second and then you'll see what happens next. So you hear the pump kick on and it's automatically gonna do a quick air purge. And then in just a few seconds, we'll hear the solenoid open up and start to flow the cow gas. So you heard the pump bog down a little bit. I'm starting to see a reaction on the sensors from the calibration gas being flowed to the sensors in the meter and it didn't like what it saw. So I see a red flashing light here. This is normal if the bump test fails. And so it has automatically started the calibration sequence now. And so now it's gonna apply more gas and it's gonna go ahead and run a full calibration on this instrument. This is the beauty of calibration stations. Again, you should bump check before each day's use. And if the bump check doesn't pass, what needs to happen? you need to calibrate your meter. And so the calibration station will automatically do that for you. And at the end of this sequence, we'll be able to see which sensors passed or failed the bump, and then we'll see which sensors pass or fail calibration. Now it's doing an air purge. It's gonna check the alarms. all those passed and then there is my report so everything passed the only fail that I had was it failed the bump test on the oxygen sensor and so it ran a full calibration on the entire unit and then it automatically powers the unit down so that's how quick and simple a bump check would be and in this instance you can see I failed the bump so it automatically jumped over and ran a calibration, and now I have a green light for calibration. Now I would be able to remove this instrument and then go out and use it for my day's work. Once I've passed my bump check or my calibration, now I'm ready to turn the meter on and use it for the rest of the day. So push and hold the power button. Once you hear the beep, you can let go and then it's automatically gonna run through this warm-up sequence. So I just calibrated, so my next cow's due in 90 days. There's my time and my date. It's telling me what my battery power is and my alarms are set to latch. There's my four sensors that are installed. There's the full scale readings of each sensor. There's the warning alarm set points. There's the alarm set points. There's also a third high alarm set points. These are my short-term exposure limit set points, my time-weighted average set points. Notice those only report for the toxic sensors. And now the meter's ready to use. So let's look and see what the alarms sound like. Right now, I'm reading all zeros. I'm reading about 500 ppm CO2, and I'm reading 20.9% oxygen. If I blow into the CO2 sensor, it's gonna start to scale up very quickly and go into alarm. I wanna show you what that sounds like. I'm gonna cover up the speaker port so you can still hear me on the video, and then I'll show you how to reset the alarm. So real quick, alarm test. So you can see my CO2 is starting to scale up. And I'm just covering up the speaker. Now, as that number starts to fall, since I hit the high alarm, it's not going to automatically reset itself. And so in order to reset that alarm, when they're set to latched, I would just hit my power mode button. 
and then that clears that audible, visual, and vibration alarm, and you can see that my CO2 numbers continue to fall. So if I'm still in an alarm condition, it's going to keep chirping at me until I move to a safe area or the alarm condition goes away. And then to silence those alarms when they're set to latched, you'll push your power mode button. The beauty of in-case calibration is not only does it provide you a means of doing bump check and calibrations with the onboard calibration station and the calibration gases on the lower level, but it is also providing power to the instruments and to the cal station. And so I just want to cover really quickly how you'll put your meters on charge. You want to keep them on charge. You're not going to hurt the batteries by having them on charge all the time. And so let me show you how the charging leads connect. So here's one of the GX3R Pros and you can see where that charging lead connects. Let's take a little bit closer look. So I just pull that away from the instrument. It breaks away very easily. They designed that on purpose. They didn't want this to be such a hard connection that it could possibly break either the charging lead or the instrument. And so it does slip off fairly easily. But the beauty of our system is once that's plugged in, you'll see the charge light come on and then you'll just nestle that back down into this little foam set and the charger is going to remain engaged. But when you're ready to use the instrument, of course, pull the meter out, pull the charging lead off and you can go and use the instrument. If you look on the back, there's what the charging port on the instrument looks like. You've got the two contact points here. And then if you look at the charging lead, you've got the two contact points there on the charging lead. So every time you're finished with your meter and you're ready to put it away for uh, the next shift, just make sure that those contact points line up and then you just simply slip that charging uh, lead onto the end of the, onto the indentation here on the instrument and you'll feel it kind of snap into place. But at the same time, as I mentioned, it breaks away really easily. So just make sure that when you slide that charger connector in, just make sure that it stays in place and then you'll put the meter back into this position and just make sure that your charging light is on. You can also charge the instrument on the cradle. And so again, this kit is really designed to hold five instruments, four in the foam set and one more instrument on the calibration station. While the meters are charging, the light will uh, show orange, and when the charging is complete, that light on the instrument will glow green. Green means good, that your battery is fully charged. Last but not least, I wanna just mention sensor replacement. And so it's very easy to access the sensors on the GX3R, whether it's the base model or the GX3R Pro that has four sensors installed. As you can see, there's only two small Phillips head screws. You would remove those screws. This entire sensor cap would then be released. Uh, there are tabs here, so you'll take a flat tip to pry those tabs up gently, release this entire sensor cap, and then underneath the sensor cap are the three sensors. You'll replace the sensor that has failed. You'll reinstall the sensor cap and then put the two screws back in and snug those down. And then of course, anytime you change a sensor in a gas detection instrument, you need to run a new calibration so that the instrument will recognize the new sensor that you've installed. And then on the pump module, there's very little maintenance to do here. Um, there's the battery, of course, that needs to be replaced from time to time. Just open up the battery compartment, replace it with a new battery, and then make sure that gets closed and twisted uh, all the way. And then underneath this uh, sample inlet port is a small filter to block uh, dust and dirt. And so you'll replace that from time to time. And then once that new filter is in place, just line up those lugs and then turn that uh, sample port uh, cover back into place. And that's really all the maintenance that needs to be done on the pump module. So there you have it. The GX3R and the GX3R Pro from RKI Instruments featuring in-case calibration available exclusively from Allsafe Industries. 
If you got value out of this video, we sure would like to have you as a customer. Give our sales or our service team a call. If you are a customer, thank you so much. We really appreciate the trust and confidence you put in us to be your safety equipment provider. Please let us know what more we can do for you. And as always, check out our website, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can pick up more content just like this.